May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 By Wednesday, I was already trying to look on the bright side of life. So I posted something silly on Facebook to change the story I've been seeing much of lately. I wrote on a positive note after I looked in the mirror, it's been a pretty good hair day. And I generally feel better when I wear red. Please share some good news here, seriously, anything, spread some love, I said. And to my great delight and quick succession, over 92 people posted their good news. It proved my scientific theory that people are hungry for the good news. The cat scratched me last night, someone said, but my dad was discharged from the hospital. Taco Bell from was lunch was delicious. My dog made it a whole week without making a mess in the house. I work at one of the best nonprofits in Baltimore, said someone, seriously helping women to change their lives and their families. I had a great morning on the tennis court. I had a roof over my head. My children are happy. My nephew doesn't have a brain tumor. Two people in less than an hour requested membership at my church. No one in the last year requested to be transferred out. I thought that was good news. Our Muslim and Jewish student groups are having their first ever joint meeting this Friday. All this angst has been great for my artwork, said another friend. The great majority of posts in my scientific study, though, had to do with animals, food, and friends. It was a joy to have so many share their news. It made a difference in my life. It was something little, and it was unintentional and yet it gave life. So back to food. On Thursday afternoon, I found myself standing alone in the freezer section of the giant when I heard the voice crying in the wilderness. I'm on sale, the voice said. Briar's ice cream, two for five dollars. <laughs> what, I said, what a deal. You can't get a scoop of ice cream for five dollars at Baskin Robbins anymore. Mint chocolate chip for Doug, now what for me? Chocolate is the usual choice, but then I saw it. It was almost radiant and glory like a city on a hill, salted caramel. Oh yes. Hop in the basket, my new best friend. It's going to be a lovely night together. Have you had this stuff lately? The proportions are just right. Creamy, sweet caramel flavored deliciousness with a sea salt flavored swirl going through it, making it an abundant carton of joy. And so finally, we make our way to the gospel. You wonder how long it <laughs> But first, I have this other story since you're wondering if I'm going to preach about politics. Uh, there's this story this morning from Tony Campolo, who's a preacher who said that mixing church and state is like mis mixing horse manure and ice cream. It's not going to make much of a difference to the manure, but it sure is going to ruin some delicious ice cream. <laughs> You'll get that eventually. <laughs> you are the salt of the earth, Jesus says. I love salt. You love salt. Our bodies require salt. It was expensive back in those days. It was how they were paid. That's where the word salary comes from. So you learned something today. Hence our word salary. I don't get that till this week. Salt brings out the flavor and goodness of something. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. It is the good news. You don't have to do anything to get it. He doesn't say you ought to be salt or you will be salt after you do something. You are the blessing I made you to be. You came out of the womb as salt and you go back to the earth as salt. Seriously, this is good news. But in case the disciples don't get that, he gives them one more image. You are light. You're the light of the world. You allow the beauty of God's creation to be seen. With you, we can see color. With you, light, 
We can find what was lost. With light, we can grow. We can be warmed. We can see ahead. With light, we can see how to fix the problem. With light, we can see how to distinguish between the net chocolate chip and salted caramel in the freezer in the middle of the night. You are the light of the world. <coughs> Our world needs the good news. You are the salt to bring out that good news from the creation that already exists. It won't take much. In fact, a little goes a long way. Do not overdo it, or it can do harm. You may not think that just a dash or a smile or opening a door or posting something genuinely funny will matter, but give it a while to simmer and it will. You are the light that exists to highlight the good in God's creation. If you keep your little light hidden, you'll never make a difference, but it can be shared. And what you focus on will get the attention. If you put the spotlight on the wrong thing in your life or in your perspective, that thing is going to seem to magnify in perspective. It seems to me that we have a lot of salty people in this congregation and in our world. The catch is that we may not all agree on how much salt we like in one dish or where we want to shine our light. It also seems to me that this is the way it has always been. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. But as Christians, we are called to double down on hope. As Lutheranians, we are called to share our experience that there is hope for two little communities of faith. Doubling down on hope works, and we can preach that. We are commanded to love God and to love our neighbor. I believe we have a special gift here in this community in our diversity. We are refugee and immigrant. We are founder and descendant, red and yellow, black and white. We are spender and saver. We are entrepreneur and historian. We are creative and comfortable. We are milk toast and spicy. We are quite the interesting recipe on paper. But when we share our gifts in proportion, it is a pretty delicious thing to behold. Now, one more word this morning. There is no substitute for salt or light. In 1981, I was five, and my grandmother had open heart surgery. That was before there was as much technology as there was today, and so there were some complications. She moved into our basement, and my dad rigged up this great old radio shack thing with one little wire and a little buzzer, and I could push it and talk to my grandma in the basement. And, uh, I don't remember much about the situation, she didn't live very long, but uh, I remember her diet had to change, and so what is the first thing you have to cut out, right, is salt, and, and my mother, trying to be nice to her, brought home this little can of Morton's, uh, like, imitation salt, and that stuff is nasty. <laughs> that stuff is gross, it doesn't work. It is not a salt substitute. And the same goes with light. You can make it work, but try halogen or LED or incandescent and name it daylight all you want to, but there is no substitute for the natural light. No one, no club, no school, no nonprofit, no business has what we have. We have the love of God, and we have the model of Jesus to follow. And it seems to me that he did a lot more demonstrating than he did protesting. I'm not a good protester, maybe you are, and we need some of that, but I believe that if we keep demonstrating love, that love will overcome our fear. A love in God revealed in Jesus, empowered by the Spirit. A love forgiven because Jesus died and rose again. A love of this church, broken and redeemed. A love revealed in breaking the bread. A love made known that coming here regularly makes a difference in my life. 
A love that keeps trying to choose over fear. A love for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of every human being. Like many of my sermons, this one is not finished. You get to take it home and do that. But I will end with that image that is on the front of your bulletin. It is the Canyon de Che in Arizona. The Anasazi people dug it out of that mountain. They dug it out of there. And it is not on ground level, it is like up. You have to climb up to dig that out. It is risky business, becoming and being the city on the hill. I believe that's what we are called to be, a city holding up love for everyone to see, a city that will endure, a city that has doubled down on hope that the salt and light we have to share together will spread near and far. And maybe once we get there, we'll share some ice cream too. Amen. Um.